the uh, special meeting to order. Uh, start with ordering and approval of the agenda. So moved. Thank you, Nick. You're here a second. Second. Thanks, Emily. Those in favor? Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, is there anyone in attendance at tonight's meeting who would like to address the board about something that is not on the agenda? Welcome. Uh, let's move right along to board business 4.1 COVID-19 gating criteria. Right, something that we've been talking about, uh, at least in draft forms the last two weeks, is the gating criteria. And of course, this gating information is essentially a document. Sometimes people refer to it as a matrix, uh, but it gives you some guidance in terms of what percentages or what items and variables you'd want to look at to de help determine whether you want to go with students every day, such as we call our green model, or if you want to go to the 50% hybrid model, we have half the kids in, like in our case, two days a week, and the other half the other two days, the rest online. Or if it gets to the, the case where numbers go up or cases go up, uh, the, the risk goes up and it would move into a red level which is similar to what we did last year. Again, the instruction would look different than last spring, but what we're talking about is all students learning online from home with our teachers connecting if we get all the way to the right. Obviously, there, there's a lot of different opinions on this, and if you follow uh, the media outlets, uh, it, it is a hot topic right now. There's gating criteria from Johnson County. Obviously, what I have in front of you is uh, the one that we've been working on in committee with Douglas County Health Officials, we have the KSDE criteria and guidelines, and also KNEA has put out a criteria. There's some differences between each of those. And, and the reason we wanted to meet tonight was to discuss what of these, which of these matrix do we want to go with, what factors do we want to determine as far as the most important, and what makes the most sense for our districts and our students. So as you look at that, um, the, some of the differences between these would be uh, the KSDE, which I believe is the second one, Kansas Schools Gating Criteria Navigating Change. If you look at that based on percentage of positives, which you can see on the second page, you actually move to the yellow category at 3% positivity rate. And understand positivity rate. That doesn't mean how many positive cases you have, it means how many total tests you've given and how many of those are positive. So that can fluctuate a lot depending on the size of your county and your community. If you give 10 tests in a week and three of them are positive, it, it's gonna be pretty tough to meet some of this criteria. You give like in, in uh, Lawrence or Douglas County this last week when they're testing many of the KU students and staff, your numbers for tests are gonna be much larger. So if you're positive or down in the, the 80s or 90s and you get 2,000 tests, well, it's going to fit better in the positivity rate. So that's what we mean by that. And again, at 3%, it goes to yellow. 6%, you can see going to the orange. And, and don't confuse to the gating criteria. All of these are set up in four colors as opposed to ours it is three right because we said really there's only going to be three because there's three methods of instruction that we're going to give we're going to give instruction every day hybrid full remote that's why we have three clubs so this is just a little bit different some of the examples of what other communities have done just before we I'll wrap this up and let you guys start discussing but for example Jackson County they took uh, the KSD document and they combined uh, the, yellow, the green and the yellow, and just said that's going to be our green, and we're going to stay within those percentages. So anytime it gets up to six percent, that's when we're going to go hybrid. That's going to be basically would be our yellow, and the red would be red. So they've done it that way. Um, I believe after hearing the conversation today, Baldwin took the Douglas County document and kept everything the same except for uh, they moved that during their their yellow on those percentages. They wanted their elementary kids in every day. So they went the pre-K through five instruction, even in yellow, and uh, six through, or yeah, I think it's six through 12, then would go hybrid every, you know, two days a week, like we, we were starting. And that's at Baldwin, you said. Baldwin did that. And then they also said in, in the yellow, 
uh, they were going to move that into even in yellow the band and the vocal would continue and so would athletics as long as again uh, Keisha and the other teams allowed that to take place so that's how they went so there's there's a few options there I, I don't know if there's one perfect answer to this that's why you have people interpreting this different ways that's why you have different counties different schools you have different entities providing these matrix however it's something that we need to have in place so we know what we're going to do it's just like when we started out on the 12th we announced we're going to start in yellow it was based off of the data that the counties gave us at that time put it on the sheet and said okay we're we're in hybrid we're in yellow this week same thing the data came to us the same way however it was lower so we said okay on the 31st we're going to shift to the green because of work fit on the matrix so that's how everything works so what we need to do is decide as a board you get to decide and i'll be glad to again answer any questions on this is what do you want to look at in terms of what's in, important here so you need to determine is it elementary is it how we're going to do some of those what they call the high risk activities with uh, for us it would be football band vocal and how does that fit everything else i think kind of fits into place for us based on numbers but we do have some decisions to make so that's the that's the overview travis if you want to from there okay um, so the decisions we have to make do we want to move pre-k on site into the yellow mode or do we want to scrap the three we have and go to four different colors um, and if we go to if we stay at three colors we need to make a decision really band and vocal and football are going on right now in the yellow correct yes because in what the yellow for douglas County, we're operating on the douglas county model right now okay and and what that says in yellow you can have practice with those high risk activities but you can't compete the band and the vocal we've done it's been going on again with half and half we've had those kids outside there's a lot of accommodations they met with uh, bell covers that we purchased and they followed the case recommendation as far as slitting the mask, mask where the mouthpiece goes in, but yet they're still having nose covered so they can breathe. It's really some of the best things that we can do based on the situation we're in. So, yes, right now we are following Douglas County. Uh, and, and right now, with the numbers going in green, everything would go on as normal. But again, as you know, this thing's changed many times. The numbers have changed over a week's notice we have committed to going into two week intervals right now just so parents can have a little bit of plan that, that is it some would say that that would be an inconvenience others would say it's, it's nice to have the option to go if, if they feel they want our our kids in front of teachers to be able to go to green if the numbers allow us um, but we still believe everything that at least i i believe best thing for our kids is to be in front of our teachers we have great teachers we have kids that need them and we have parents that are counting our teachers to educate and also a lot of our parents have have tasks they need to continue on with. so are we, are we still getting the numbers from the health department on the wednesdays and you're saying if we're going to go two weeks so if, if the numbers go up this coming wednesday are we still going to go with the same plan for the following week or yes because that's we get the numbers on a on a the first time we come down you should, you're, you're going to see 10 on that one correct that orange yes okay so if you go over to now i've got the douglas county and that's the one with the public health on top yep and if the, the positivity rate positive percent of positive tests is that under criteria that first column it's at and the orange is 15 percent okay so you're five percent difference there it's it's also confusing because we're looking at two different factors building percentage and then community well there the, the community positivity rates are on all three. Yeah. They're just in different spots. Right. Right. The, the top and the row. Public health doesn't include building. They just have that absolute absenteeism. And the top row on the, the for the absenteeism. That was going to be really tough to figure, and I'll, I'll tell you why I, I say that is because the, what you're looking at on that one is, is you look at last year's attendance rate for each building. And then you want to figure, okay, 
based on this year's attendance rate, is it 3% higher, 3 to 5, 6% above 10? So it goes in that. However, remember what we're telling our kids and our staff to do right now. If you are sick, you are to do what? Stay home. Stay, Stay home. home. Mm -hmm. We know it's going to be higher. So that, that one's really kind of hard to... So, Jamie, so I'm, I'm tracking with Nate now. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, and I'm sorry, I, I, I want to continue down that path. If I look at this, uh, what is this one? Kansas School's grading criteria. Okay. The second row. Yes. Positivity rates. Yes. Green is less than 5%. Yes. If I look at Douglas County, green is less than 5% the first yes. row. Yes. If I look at KNEA, it's one, two, three, four rows down, less than 5%. Yeah, they're the same the way I see it. Yeah. And if I look at yellow, it's 5.1 to 9.9% in yellow mm -hmm. for this first one. Right. And then Douglas County is less than 10%. That seems to be the same to me. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the yellow, yes. The green and the yellow are going to be the same, Nick. You're right. And then orange, less than 15% or 10 to 14.9%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 10 to 15, mm -hmm. yes. I, I was looking at absenteeism, I apologize. Yeah, and then red, it looks like greater than 15. Mm -hmm. Same, same three, number there. So it's yeah. the same on all three. Okay, so I, th I think we got the same positivity rates across the board. The absenteeism does, does change. It looks like it fluctuates a little bit. Mm -hmm. as long I think as on 10, can yeah, it's a little bit lower. Yep. So that's assuming Douglas County is the community gating criteria of the building. Yes, it is. So I think I think the numbers are the same from what I can see as far as positive test results. Mm -hmm. I think the question is, do we want to go with four levels or three levels? And then how do we manage, and, and when we talk about high risk, we're talking about football and band? And choir. And choir. Okay. And, and to clarify, Nick, if we change to three, or if we stay at three levels, I'm hearing Jackie say that she would be prefer to have K-5 be in-house and 612 be remote in the yellow. That is a current change. From what, that would be changing what we're currently doing in the yellow mode. So right now we're 50-50 across the board. Yes. And you're saying K through 5, we want to do in-house and everybody else 50-50, right? I'm Actually, saying Jackie right. said she support yeah. the, and don't want to put words in your mouth. Stop me when yeah, I say something not, wrong. I don't necessarily say at yellow that 6 through 12 has to be remote. I just want pre K through five in the building. So uh, that's in following, the yellow. Mm, that's following K N E A then. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So that's that that's exactly right. And we'd be following exactly. But then the, and then you go to by doing that then do you go from on site to remote only in red for K through twelve or do you create an orange and keep them go hybrid in an orange K through five. Well, like the K and the A. Yeah, I like their model. Uh, I agree that the younger kids will get much more out of being in person as much as possible. I think it's easier for the older kids to still get the education remotely than it is the younger kids. Mm -hmm. Not better, but easier to, easier to deliver that education at that level. Agreed. Nothing is better than having all of our kids in school every day like yeah, normal, but that's, that's, my thought. that's my thought. That's not probably going to be the likely option for the rest of the year. So. Power of positive thinking, Jerry. I know. <laughs> I would love to see it. I'm just saying. So we seem to be in agreement on community criteria as they're all the same. And then it sounds like the crew is leaning towards KNEA's plan for 
the PK through five being on-site for green, on-site for yellow, hybrid for orange, and remote only for red, and then six through 12, on-site for green, hybrid for yellow, remote only for orange, and then remote only for red. So it's, I mean, obviously we can have more discussion on that. Um, but I don't know if we wanna continue just like looking down at this plan or if anyone has thoughts for the band choir and football. Keisha's, that last email you sent, I had a really hard time reading. I don't know if anyone else did too. too. But I needed like a magnifying glass. Yes. And I read yes. through the first like four inches and then it, it wasn't happening. <laughs> so essentially what, what Keisha is looking at uh, for that is, is, and they'll be voting on this on Friday, will be to allow schools to make a choice to move their fall athletic and their activities, the athletic part of it, to a spring window. So that means that if you make the choice to not do sports right now, and I think you have to notify them in the plan if it's approved would by September the 17th, you could do that. They would not shorten the uh, winter sports, so your winter sports are going to be boys basketball, girls basketball, wrestling. If it's over, you could go into your fall sports at that window, which would extend to, I think it was about six weeks, and but it overlaps when your spring sports would start. Baseball, softball, track, uh, golf for us. So you would have some kids who would have to make a choice, at least the first part of that season, which one of those sports are going to do. The other big the big uh, ticket item in there that people are looking at is the fall sports have moved to the spring. There is no postseason. It's it's for football, for example. It's six games, and that's it. Once it's six games, no more. There's no. And so far, JB, it's the big schools. It's the it's the, the Wichita's, the Kansas City, the five and six eight schools have, have already decided to go to the spring. Um, or at least opted out to not play right now. At least opted out. And, and the thing is with those bigger schools that we need to consider, I think, as far as we sometimes struggle to fill a softball team or a baseball team or a track team. So when you start putting all those into the same season, um, you know, uh, you're talking about the same kids. And, and, and for kids to choose, there's, there's going to be a lot of that. Um, especially the fact that they didn't get a spring sport last year, there's going to be a lot of enthusiasm to participate in a spring sport, I would sure. think, this year. So, I don't know if that's even pertinent to the conversation we're having, it's just my thought on, on this movement to spring. Have you heard from like any of our other league schools, is anybody talking about this? Are they all thinking they want to try to just keep the season in the fall? And the teams that we would be playing. Right. Fair question. Jackie and uh, Jerry, what I've heard so far right now is, as Travis said, the only schools that are, have said they would think about this are the ones that have canceled. So you're talking about the Johnson County schools, the Wyandotte County, and not even all of Cedric, just the City League in Wichita. Right? So that's the ones that I know are going up. So you're talking about five and six A schools. Right. They're doing that. The, uh, I just didn't know if any, like any of our league or anybody had no. said anything. And, and so again, keep in mind the, the footprint of our league, mostly it, it's north, mm -hmm. right? So uh, the Jeff West, the Royal Valleys, the Holtons, then you go all the way up to Hiawatha, Sabetha, Seneca, Nemo Central. That they they want that it's now is what they're looking at. And, and again, their positive percentage rates even is a lot lower than what ours is now. Right. Uh, so it, it's not as pressing of an issue for them right now. So the, the league is not looking at that. I didn't think so, but was just curious if you had heard anything from any of those other superintendents. So if we move to four, there seems to be a little bit of a do we do we pull the plug on those three activities in the orange and let it keep practicing and participate in the yellow? Say that again. Do we choir band and football could go on if we went to this KNEA mode or use this this matrix? 
band, choir, and football group would continue at least to practice in the yellow, but not necessarily play. And then the orange, it would be suspended. And of course, in the red, it's suspended anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I would tell you in the yellow, that's what I, I believe Baldwin went with last night, was to say they would continue even to play. In yellow. In yellow. And then participate or practice in orange and then not practice I, in I, red. I haven't heard that one yet. I think when you're at that orange level, yeah, that's. I, so, I would almost say this: if, if we're in the yellow and we're playing anything from yellow up, we would definitely need to consult with the other school, our our county health official, and determine the safety of that. Because then the, probably the county health official of the, of the of where the venue is going to be played. I, I well, agree. I, I don't think that's something you can play on a you know a coach or an AD or a principal or a student. That that comes kind of with a lot bigger. And what we're running into now is, for example, these other schools that are making these decisions. Obviously, it's a lot different right now here where we sit, you know, in the Cradle Falcon District than it is in Johnson County or Wyandotte. E even, even different than in, in Lawrence right now where all the kids are being tested at KU. It's just a difference and we're not even that far away. So that's why I think you have to really rely on those health officials to say, okay, where are we at in terms of our, our district and our location? So I think, to me, if we're in yellow or, or and orange, as long as they're saying good, we're good. Um, but if, if they're saying, you know, you, you've got an outbreak in your district and you've got 10 cases right now um, with half of those as students, and if they say they wouldn't advise that, then I don't know that we would want to go against that advice. Agreed. That's Agreed. what I'm saying. 100% agree. So really we would agree with all of this yellow with the exception of the no high risk activities and no group travel. Yes. That would all be done with consultation. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the only high risk activity that's going to be affected by this is going to be football. We're not going to have band competitions or choir competitions. Or the the yeah, but it's saying no band and no choir. Right, right. So, no, so we, we'd have band class, but those kids would have to go work on something else. Yeah, they, understood. Yeah. Understood. So obviously, the other spring sports, uh, and, and while it doesn't affect us, uh, how, how can they, uh, soccer, I, that, that, there's a lot of face-to-face -face participation there. You don't even have the, uh, how is soccer any different than football in that regard? And, and if you look at the Douglas soccer. County model, they had moved some other sports into that high risk. Um, and not that it affects us, and I don't want to elongate our conversation, I'm just trying to get my arms up for yeah. apple considering. So I'm Douglas curious. County has moved soccer in, as you mentioned, and basketball. And the others are listed there, rugby, lacrosse, field hockey, yeah. ice hockey, dance, those are all in there too. What are you seeing that at, JV? That is, I'm looking on the Douglas County third document, third page, if you go down to number eight in the fine print, Number eight on the left side, gotcha. classification of activities by risk. So JV, it looks like Douglas County allows um, high school high risk in the yellow. They do not allow high risk in the, in the yellow in Douglas County. Oh, okay, I was thinking the top was the middle school, the bottom was the right. Let me double check so, that. So maybe you're yep. You can have conditioning in practice. Yes. I think that's, again, that's creating some controversy for those schools to say if we're in yellow, we're shutting down a competition. That's, that's division law. So this even includes language, though, that that kind of sounds like that consulting like no group travel by bus or other collective means that does not allow for mitigation techniques right schools must consider social distancing requirement when scheduling contests and events so it could happen but you just have to have approval of all parties <laughs> I guess my gut says I would like to see those kids get as much of a football season as they can possibly get. I would like to see band and choir do as much as they can do. But 
but I agree like as far as football goes you know if we're in the yellow I would be all for allowing the football games to happen as long as both schools county health departments felt like they were at a point where it would be okay I don't know that that should maybe be our decision as much as consulting with the county health department and the other school that's involved yeah, I think it's appropriate for us to stay in our mind and let, let somebody who's I mean, I feel like I would say if, if the county and the other school involved in their county feel like it's safe for that game to occur, then we let that game happen. And as far as band and choir go, I guess, I mean, if they're doing it with masks on right now anyway, do we allow that as long as, I mean, if we're in the yellow, our kids are in our high school kids that are doing band and choir are in hybrid mode anyway so we don't have the entire band or the entire choir in the classroom anyway so right so what would happen though and, and nick said there's no competition for band but they just historically perform at a, at a home football game where does the where does that put marching band at in this thing michelle Looking at the Acacia guidelines is what I would recommend. Again, they're, they're telling you you have to maintain spacing. I think the spacing increases for trombones. I don't remember that word for word, but if I go on the Acacia website, we could pull that down. It is different or it allows it, but they don't break it down by levels. They're just telling you the best practices for that practice of what you should be doing to maximize students in, in, in the interest of, of, of if we followed all those guidelines we could even have marching band or the band out in the field at halftime of a game sure yeah or or play on the sidelines spread out six they, feet apart yeah they could be all spread out on the field maybe they don't march in any kind of you know they just spread out on the field and play their songs and yeah, they don't have to do a routine they don't have to do any kind of you know routine or formations but they can all go to their place play their song and come back up but if we're in the yellow, again, as I'm reading the Douglas County information in a high-risk activity, it wouldn't be a football game to play for. Agree? Yep. That's the way I see it. Unless you get special permission or whatever. That goes back to those high-risk activities being allowed in the yellow, or being allowed with considerations from the local health department. Correct. Mm -hmm. I don't put words in anyone's mouth, but. Yep. Well, JB, like you said, we're gonna be playing with the North team that are not exposed to the big populations like Johnson County and why not? You know, so you're not, the exposure is gonna be a lot different. Right. So I agree with you. I think we should, as long as we can, let's do it. You know, I, I could see if we were going down to which to play, you know, we're not six days, so we're not gonna be in that big crowd and give the kids the opportunity to participate, so. Okay. Okay. Um, Stop me when someone disagrees. I, I'm hearing if, if we're gonna, if everyone will look at the K and the A, uh, there seems to be some favor to create four, like a green and yellow and orange and red. As far as uh, on site and the PK through five, on site in the yellow and hybrid on the 612, the orange would be hybrid for the PK through five in orange and remote only for 612 and then remote only for all the above in the red. Am I hearing favor in that? Can we vote section by section, or do you want a whole? you want to make a motion? I, I think that's one of the two things we need to decide here tonight, right? Yes. Uh, it appears we have some consensus there. I'll entertain a motion for what I just kind of laid out. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it if you'd like me to. Uh, I got you. Is that okay to do? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because what, what and we have saying? a motion, and uh, uh, Emily has made a motion, and Ramon is seconded. Any further discussion? 
I would like to clarify the criteria. Okay. You did say that absenteeism is going to be very difficult to gauge. I did say what? Absenteeism. Yes. What criteria are we using to determine this shift? To, to Absent, me, I'm yeah, sorry. The biggest criteria that we've talked in talking with the health departments has been your um, positive percentage rates. Um, so if you look at that one, the two week county uh, percent, so that's the second from the bottom. You're looking at the KDA model? Or, yep. Okay. So that one, uh, we, we I get discussions on the local hospital capacity and the trend in community incident data has been provided easily. Number of cases, that, that's a hard one. Again, as this week in Lawrence, Jackie, you know this from your, your job. Right now when you're testing 2,000 students and staff, I mean, it's hard to gauge just new cases. Right. That one's gonna be iffy. It's got you have to have all things stable. So I think the bottom three are the most important and then following up with the uh, incident rate. And then you can look at the building criteria for the absenteeism. I just think that's the toughest one because we're telling kids. We don't have a baseline. We don't have a baseline this year, right? Um, we got kids working remote in, in the building. We don't know who's sick if they're not here. And yeah, I, yeah, I have a hard time with that. So the only thing I would suggest um, it is that we agree on community criteria, community, uh, the bottom three uh, related to community criteria, trend, stable or decreasing stable, stable or increasing uh, community criteria with positivity rates. Um, I think those numbers are aligned. Um, and then the local referring hospital capacity. Those are data points that we can get and don't Easily. get started on whether or not they're accurate data points or what those mean. But yes. I so that, that's that. what we've used the first yeah. two times, maybe. Yes. So some, Absolutely. Nick, Nick, you're saying throw out the building and community criteria, the top two. Agreed, yes. That's that's what, I'm, not, I'm not agreeing, I'm saying that's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I said the three I wanted to add. You rephrased it to the two I wanted to remove. So <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Kind of just, you got it, Travis. That probably needs to be part of the motion, correct? Yeah, I think my intent in my motion was just to approve the model for uh, student location in those four different um, lanes, if you will. So okay. I'd be happy to add my motion, I don't know if that's loud or if we just vote on that separately. My initial intent was that we were, or thought was that we were going to vote on that actual we can certainly do criteria that. separately. Yeah. Okay, so we can go to criteria next. How about that? Yep. Nick, you okay with that? I'm good with that, sir. We have a motion. Any further discussion? In a second, any further discussion? Those in favor, please raise your hand. Agreed. Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, so now let's move along to that criteria and what Nick was saying. <laughs> Mr. President, I move that we use um, the following for um, indicators related to which model we are moving to or from, um, including community criteria under the KNEA model of trend in county incident rate, under community criteria two week county percentage positive case rate and community criteria local referring hospital capacity as presented in the KNEA model. Thank you, Nick. Do you hear a second? Second. I'm sorry? Second. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion or statements? And, and, and I have one too. Ramon, you get to go first. Okay, so the motion has to include that we're not going to do the the other two the motion said what we were going to include it did not say what we were not going to include that's what i heard correct okay and this is more of a question we have jefferson county here at eighteen thousand, and we have douglas county at ten and a half times that how does and i know that you've answered this question already because i asked you this two weeks ago when we we're trying to decide how do you mold the eighteen thousand jefferson county versus the two hundred ten thousand douglas county how, how does that fit together with Charlie. So by directly calling the uh, data people at Douglas County, I, I actually get the, the, the exact numbers from Jefferson County. How many tests, how many positives. 
I give that to the data people at Douglas County, which is D and, and Iowa as our, their other name, uh, two people I work with, and they blend those into Douglas County rates and they spin out a percentage for them. So okay. they're not giving you Douglas County numbers, they're giving you the total when you give them Jefferson County numbers. Exactly. And, and I asked the question, so how do we figure, because to me, positive percentage is pretty simple. You, you look at how many tests, how many positives, on a small scale, it looks pretty good. So this is what I found out with the Douglas County. You, you have, it doesn't work quite that way because you have some individuals that have tested more than once. You, you have to take that into account. You have other individuals that have shifted from one county because of KU to a home county. So they have a formula that takes all that into account and uh, it, it becomes pretty complex. So uh, two very intelligent people working on that and I give them the, the simple rates, they give me the complex rate by percentage. That's why as long as we have a, a number we can get to. Uh, it is. Yeah. That number. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, so now let's move on to, I hate to use the term higher risk activity, but that's what they're calling it. So. What do we want to do there, y'all? Where do those fit into our four colors here? So if I understand this correctly, competition is allowed in green. We've talked about getting special permission mm -hmm. to do competitions in yellow. But based on the plan, that's it. So worst case scenario, we're only competing in green. That's worst case. And we, as a district, have committed to a two week lead time. Correct. So we know if we move out of green, it's gonna be for two weeks. Yes. That's gonna be two competitions. Yes. Right? That's correct. And again, from my personal understanding or perspective, I don't think that they and Inquire are really in scope because we're not, we can modify that. I mean, they're, they're in class right now. They can continue to, to, to practice or condition mm -hmm. with modifications. So I don't know that, again, in my opinion, I don't know if that needs to be scrapped. I think we're really focused on what the football looks like and, and that's the driving factor. To your point, if we don't compete, ban, that band, whatever's not an issue, right? That's correct. So the question is, and I think we tried to answer that, if we go to yellow, do we still compete? Obviously, I think orange and red are probably out. Mm -hmm. Yellow is the gray area. And are we going to ask for special permission in the yellow to continue to compete? Or do we need to get the people of Douglas County to take wherever we're going with wherever we are and spit out some number for us. I think the easiest considering that we are in, you know, both our middle school and our high, our high school in Jefferson County would be conferring with um, with Crystal Van Houten at, at the Jefferson County Health Department, who's our medical health official for the county. Have her contact with wherever we would be playing if we are in the yellow to confirm that that's what we're going to do. So again, I'm going back, if we, to allow competition in the yellow, with consideration from the local health department, I think gets you to where we could be. Because that would allow two people who know their county that she's gonna to have to contact the county where you're going, or the yellow, confirm all the information, the numbers, along with what we have from Douglas County and let them give us good advice. And that would be whether we are home or on the road because unless it's Jeff West, Everybody else is going to be outside of Jefferson County, right. so we would need, if Nemohaw is coming here, we need to visit with the Nemohaw County people before we greenlight that game occurring in our place. So if we were in, yeah, if we were in, in yellow, if we're, if we're in green and, and uh, Nemohaw Central is in green, yeah. we're, we're good. I understand. Yep, you got it. But if either one of us is in some kind of a modified, we need to have the county health people. And just so you know, we, we have... We've already committed it as part of our plan for athletics that when we do travel with those groups, we're taking two bus, double the transportation just to allow for more spacing. That's just, that's a non-negotiable on that. 
-hmm. and I can get that. But you still tackle by grabbing the other you guy do. and bringing the ground. <laughs> You're still at the end of the day, it's still tackle football. You're lining up across from the nose to nose, Travis, that you say, You're right. There is a risk there. And, and as you know, one of the comments I heard uh, somebody make, you know, there, there, there are risks everywhere. Obviously, I get that. Uh, the comment was, that's why we have ambulances at football games. There's a risk there. Uh, so, JB, when will we get the numbers from the county for, for, our, for our, our next history? call? I mean, like, if we have a game in a week, we're going to go with the numbers we got. Well, we, we are going to, we're in green right now. So we, we are going to be in the green phase starting on the 31st or two weeks. So that would put us through two games. two games. Assuming, don't forget, if you have an outbreak and you have to quarantine, that would change things. Flexibility. Flexibility. <laughs> yes, sir. Mean. So I do want to clarify as well that yellow does not eliminate the moderate or low risk activities. And we do have those that impact us as well, correct? Correct. How do you wrap all that into a motion for the yeah, I'm already passed? I think we're all looking at Nick for that. Yeah, you can pull that so moved. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You so got great. it, man. <laughs> Basically, though, I would argue that with the exception of the sentence saying no high-risk activities for the KNEA yellow plan, yes, I would think that would, well, and maybe no group of travel, um, and you add a lovely sentence about, I don't know if you need to add anything about consulting with the county health officials, but I would think that. I don't know if you're talking to me. It sounds like you're already doing it. <laughs> I, I think that's pretty good with what you have. I think you're on it. You're right on the track. Okay. I will entertain a motion. <laughs> Mr. President, <laughs> I move that we accept KNEA's recommendation for school activities for green, orange, and red and allow for yellow and also eliminate the two sentences, no high risk activities and no group travel, and add that while we're in yellow, any gains would be determined by the con consultation between county health officials. Outstanding. I think it was a very good job. I'll Do I hear that. a second? I will second that. Thank you, Dan. You have to repeat it. <laughs> Where do you get all that? I did. You're awesome. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, those in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero. Okay. I think that concludes 4.1. Don't you guys think? Yeah. Mr. Uh, President, I make a motion that we adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Fergus. Second. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Motion has been made and seconded. Those in favor, we're out. Seven to zero. Nicely done, everybody. Good work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs>